the first step in doing a survey or anything like that is to take a sample of the population. You're not going to give the survey to everyone, you're just going to give it to a few people. In this video we're going to talk about how do we ensure that the people we pick out are actually representative of the whole population. So there's a few ways to do that. It kind of depends on what sort of people are, are you interested in. Uh, the first situation you use something called a stratified sample. Or at least the first one we're going to talk about anyway. A stratified sample is useful when the people you're interested in naturally divide into groups. And those groups are different from each other. So the groups have different characteristics. The characteristics could be anything. So uh, just throw a few out there. There, you could have like different age groups, or you could have different economic status, or you could have different ethnicity. Whatever it is, if you've got some different characteristics, and you want to make sure that your sample has representatives from each of these groups. Well, the idea is instead of taking a random group of people from the whole population, instead we're going to divide people into these groups first and then take random people from each group. So let's just pick one. Let's say my groups divide naturally up into age. So let's say, okay, we've got some children and we've got some teens and some young adults uh, we got some middle-aged people and we've got some seniors and for whatever reason I want to make sure that my sample has people from each one of these groups well the idea is pretty simple. Instead of taking randomly from the whole population, I just divide everybody into groups first, and then I take some random people from each group. This way I know that when I have my sample at the end, I'll definitely have some people from each group. And exactly how you do this, like how many you take from each group, depends on what you're doing. You may want the same number from each group for some purposes. For other purposes, you might want the numbers to be reflective of how many people there are. Like, say if you're doing ethnicity, I don't know, you might want to take like half white and a third Hispanic and some Asian and some black. You might want it to be representative of population or you might want to take evenly from each one. It just, it depends on what you're doing. So. All right. Well, that's when your people naturally divide up into groups that have different characteristics and you want some for, with each characteristic. Uh, kind of the other extreme is let's say you have people that divide into groups, but those groups have the same characteristics. In that case, what you want to do is take something called a cluster sample. So again, Population divides up in groups, but the groups are all the same. So, uh, for example, I'm teaching statistics. Let's say one particular year I have five sections. Well, pretty much different sections of the same class tend to be pretty similar all in all. Usually there's a few really bright students in each section, a few pretty bad students in each section, a lot of students in the middle, so on and so forth. So since these sections are all pretty much the same, if I want to take a sample of all my statistics students, one thing I could do is just say, well, let's just throw out a few of my sections. So say I throw out these three. And I just take these two sections as being my sample. 
Well, since all of my sections of statistics have pretty similar students in them, that means my sample, sure enough, is representative of the population. So that works pretty well when you have groups and the groups are all the same as each other. All right. One more method that's pretty common and pretty useful as well is to take something called the systematic sample. Systematic sample, basically you just give everybody a number and then take equally spaced numbers. So let's say you had a thousand people and you want 20 people in your sample, then you just take every 50th person. The good thing about a systematic sample is that it's really easy to pick people. The bad thing about it is that if your numbering system isn't random, you could pick up a little bit of the pattern of the numbering system in your survey. So the bad thing is the numbering has to be truly random in order for this to work. If it's not, then you're not going to get a group that really represents the population. All right, well, those are the three common, or three of the most common ways to get samples that are representative of the whole population. Uh, let me tell you one thing to watch out for whenever you're doing surveys. A bad thing to do is, well, one thing you could do is just take people that are available. Okay, people that are available usually have some reason that they're available. So these are bad things to do, by the way. So if you only take the people that are available, odds are you're not going to get a sample that's representative of the whole population. Uh, another bad thing you can do, which that first one's not very common. This one actually is a little bit common. And you really shouldn't do it. Is to do an optional survey. The problem with an optional survey is that the only people that are going to respond are people that actually care. So in the end, you only get the results from the fanatics. You don't get results of just your everyday person in your population. So this is, I mean, optional surveys that are easy and a lot of people do them because of that, but it's really not a good way to get a representative sample. So, all right. Well, that should help you out as far as telling you how do you get a sample that represents the population. Again, we're not going to actually do it in this course. But just in case you ever need to do that, there's some pointers.